conclusion of science that the universe is currently in its phase of continuous expansion would be supported by the fact that the light of most galaxies shows a redshift. What draws attention is the detail that there would be a fusion between the behavior of light emitted by the stars and that of space itself. Thus, if light were to stretch in the infrared direction, it would be followed by the stretching of space. It is easy to justify this attitude of science since we have no other tool to evaluate space other than light. You look at the night sky and see light or darkness. It is as if space acts as a backdrop for the brightness of the stars. An indication of this indissoluble association between space and light is the treatment given by science to space. It would act like a rubber band or a spring. The light, whose performance would have been lent to space, would perform a harmonic movement, composed of two phases. You can easily find the model description of the spring mass set, in physics textbooks. A spring is attached to a fixed end. When you stretch the spring, you have the first phase of simple harmonic motion. This would be the phase that would have been extended by science to space, leading us to the conclusion that, thanks to its stretching, the light of most galaxies would be right-shifted. Therefore, the universe would currently be in its expansion phase. When the spring of space contracted, we would have the phase in which there would be the predominance of ultraviolet. A galaxy, whose light tended towards blue, would be on its approach to Earth. Here, the problems, generated by the fusion between the behavior of space and that of light, begin. In the spring stretching phase, the first phase of the harmonic motion of light, there would be an increase in potential energy. The spring would stretch in one direction, away from the fixed end, and the force would point in the opposite direction, to its removal. The sum of potential and kinetic energies forms the total energy of the spring mass system where the forces involved would be restorative. That is, the spring force would always be pointing towards the rest position whether in the stretch or contraction phase. If science extended to space the behavior of the spring in its first phase, the expansion of the universe could not be accompanied by an acceleration of the movement of galaxies. When stretched from the Big Bang, there would come a place when space would implode time, preventing the direct record of the expansionary phase. This complementarity between space and time is predicted by the general theory of relativity. If space stretched, time would contract. Thus, the expansion could not be evaluated in real time, even if it was there. To allow us to record the redshift of light from distant galaxies, there would need to be a reversal in the direction of the arrow of time. This would show us post-Big Bang galaxies, as they did in the past, just as they do in practice. The main feature of post-time inversion space-time is continuous time dilation. This implies, according to the theory of relativity, that space would always be contracting in here, with potential energy always decreasing. That is, there would be no room for the existence of an expansionary phase, acting in real time, as it would be accompanied by a constant increase in potential energy. The final conclusion is that the contraction of space would be allowing us to see its own expansion, although this always occurred in a time-phase way, 